Today I'm embroidering wildflowers on a linen napkin. I'll share some ideas for working without a pattern, my inspiration, and I'll explain the lazy daisy stitch, French knots, the back stitch, and how I like to invite mistakes for a naturalistic look. Sometimes I like to look at these botanical books for inspiration. They often have diagrams that can be helpful to decide on a design, placement of flowers, and of course it's inspiring to see the flowers and colors. I decided on a zigzag pattern, which is common in flowering stems. First I creased the napkin to find the center of this corner, and then I used a water-soluble pen to mark the center line. I used a few paper circles, roughly the size and shape of the Lazy Daisy stitches I'd made in another video, to decide on the amount and placement of the flowers. I'm only using them as rough guidelines, and I often deviate because I want to try something different whilst I'm embroidering. I'm using DMC 6 strand embroidery floss. Length of the thread is twice the length of my underarm, from fingertips to my elbow. And I pulled two strands, but I only used one. I folded one strand in half and threaded the ends through the eye of the needle. This forms a loop at the fold, and I used that loop as the first petal of the Lazy Daisy stitch by making a stitch the length I want the petal to be, and then pulling it until I have a small loop above the fabric. I pull the needle through the loop and make a small stitch over the loop to secure it to the fabric. To make these petals, once the thread is attached, using the loop method, I come up with an imaginary ring around the center of the flower. I go back down in the fabric where I just came up and I come up where I want the petal to end. The thread reforms a loop and I pick up the needle from within that loop. And once I pull the thread, this forms the petal and I secure it with a little stitch over that loop. So you come up where you want the petal to start, go back down into the fabric where you just came up. This forms a little loop, and then come up in the loop at the point where you want the petal to end. And make a small stitch over the loop to secure it and repeat. It can help to make the first four stitches as if it's a compass, so north to south and then east to west and then fill in the gaps. This can help you evenly space the stitches I don't always do it like that because I like the little imperfections when I make the flowers. I think they add interest and character. I even tend to invite these imperfections by alternating the length of the stitches and sometimes making my stitches sloppy and imperfect on purpose. Now the flowers on their own might look a little lopsided or out of balance, but once you see them all together it tends to work as they are part of a group of flowers. If you pull too hard on your stitch, you lose the rounded shape. And here I'm readjusting it by pulling it up with a needle and then I can reshape the stitch. To fill the center of the flowers, I will stitch a couple of French knots. I'll start with a loop method, but this time I'm going to make a tiny stitch instead of the longer one that forms the petal. You can of course opt to do it in the back of the work, but because the French knots will cover it, you're not going to see it. And to embroider the French knots, you come up where you want the French knot to be. You hold your needle horizontally just above the fabric and then wrap the thread around it a couple of times. I hold the wraps under my fingers so they don't slide off. Then you make a small stitch and hold the needle in the fabric for a little while. Slide the wraps down the needle, but don't pull too tight. I like the knots to be a little loose. Then pull the needle and thread through the wraps to form the French knot. If the wraps are a little bit too tight, wiggle or twist your needle a little bit as you pull it through. You can experiment by wrapping more often or using more strands of embroidery floss. 
I think the most common thing that goes wrong with a French knot is when you go back down the same hole as where you came up because then when you pull you might pull the knot through the fabric. So remember to make a tiny stitch. If you want to make more traditional French knots, you only do one or two reps. Pull the reps quite tight to the fabric and then pull the needle through. But for this flower, I like the looser style with multiple reps. I keep making knots until the heart is filled up and you can use these stitches sparingly or layer them for an even more three-dimensional effect. To connect the flowers and create a stem, I'm using the back stitch. First, you make a single straight stitch, come up a stitch length away, leaving a gap, and then you go down into the fabric at the end of your first stitch to fill that gap. Then you come up leaving another gap and go back to fill that gap. Again, I'm not doing it perfectly here. I like the slightly wonky line. I'm also not bothering to connect the stitches perfectly. I like the look of an interrupted line because it reminds me of pencil sketches and doodling with a pen. Here I decided to start the next flower a little bit above where the markings were, so I drew them closer together. Even though I disregard the markings I made previously, they do offer a good starting point and they allow me to think through the placement and at least start with the plan. This flower is a little bit more uneven and if this was the first flower, maybe I would have gone in and added more petals. But now there are more flowers, so the focus is more on the whole stem of flowers instead of a single flower. I think it makes it more expressive and it adds personality. So after finishing up the flowers, I decide I want to connect the flowers to the stem, but it's not a good idea to cross a big distance without securing the thread in the back. So I turn the work and wrap my thread through the stitches up to the point where I want to branch out from the stem. 
Now, if you were to cross a large area where there's no stitching, the thread might shine through the fabric and the long floating thread in the back might catch on something and damage the embroidery, especially for a piece of embroidery that I'm going to use as a napkin. To finish the thread I turn the work and weave the thread through a couple of stitches and I make a few knots. Then I cut my thread and I like to leave a small thread tail to make sure the knot doesn't come undone after some wear and tear. And the last step is to wash out the water soluble pen and give the napkin a press. If you want to make your own frayed linen napkins to embroider on, check out this tutorial here for tips and tricks.